Before Feifei can undergo artificial insemination, she needs to be anaesthetised. She must be thoroughly checked over and most importantly weighed to ensure that the right amount of anaesthetic is administered. Once sedated, she's raced to the hospital so that the artificial insemination can be completed before she wakes up. The calculations were apparently wrong. But for safety, they erred on the side of caution. Too little is better than too much. The artificial insemination is completed and Feifei is put in a quiet enclosure away from the breeding pens. They won't know for sure if it was successful until late summer, when the birthing season begins. Many of the other females in the block are also stimulated by the comings and goings in the other pens. Shi Shi starts chirping and moaning very loudly, and it's decided to try Wu Gong to see if she is more his type than Fei Fei. Shi Shi is visibly irritated by Wu Gong's apparent incompetence. She turns on him. Then Wu Gong suddenly reveals another side to his character. Perhaps he's not the apathetic, passive panda he appears to be. Despite his outburst, the keepers know Wu Gong's true character and easily tempt him away from Shi Shi with his real interest in life. Lulu, meanwhile, is being reacquainted with his very first love, Ying Ying. Like Lulu, she was a wild caught panda, but at eight years older, more mature and experienced. But Lulu's lost that loving feeling and shows absolutely no interest. Disappointed, they move her through to Wu Gong. But no joy. Aware that Ying Ying's hormone level has peaked and is dropping, there's a sense of urgency. But persisting with Lulu backfires horribly. It may look frightening, but the keepers aren't worried. The centre's director is also unperturbed by the violence and points to an even more logical explanation for the aggression. As is painfully evident when Lulu is introduced to Long Shen. Lulu 
嘴给拉拉裂了，眼睛给打瞎的，这都有。但是这还有手掌给撕开了，这些都有，但是没有死亡的可能性。Perhaps best illustrated when Ling Ling is introduced to Mei Cheng, and the situation becomes even more violent. She races next door to try to get away from him. Once safely indoors, Mei Cheng is clearly terrified, but only suffers minor cuts and scratches. Nothing serious. We've been in the outside for so many years, we haven't found a match to get a dog to get a dog. Comparing the behaviour of captive pandas and their wild relatives is an important part of Wulong's work. The long-term plan is to release some of Wulong's pandas into the wild. One of the reasons there are only eight breeding pens available out of a possible ten is because two of the pens are currently being used by the release team. As more and more females start to come into estrus, the breeding team thinks they should have priority over the pens. Once they've successfully reached the target of 300 pandas for a sustainable captive population, the hope is to use those pandas to help reach a sustainable wild population of 3,000. But the centre's director is sceptical. It's不可能说无限制的增加，因为每个大熊猫它活动的范围从三平方公里到十五、十五平方公里，它有一个活动范围的。在在这么个大范围内，不可能说你从一只熊猫跟它增加的很大，所以在野生大熊猫这个种群
到这边来呢，呃，看见大熊猫的频率呢，那个频率还是比较高的。相对四川呢，四川那边来说，四川在野外要看见一只大熊猫非常困难。在这里呢，它那个地一个是地形非常平坦，另外一个熊猫种群密度非常高。The density may be higher than in Sichuan, but there are still only around 60 to 100 pandas living in an area of around 300 square kilometers. And searching for these elusive wild pandas to study requires long treks, sometimes for several days, and climbing thousands of feet. As at Wulong, it's the spring mating season, and the chances of seeing pandas in the wild are increased because the pandas come down to the lower slopes to mate. Until a female is successfully mated, a number of males will congregate wherever she leaves her scent marks. The task of finding and filming giant pandas is still far from simple. But after a long and exhausting climb, the sound of loud bleating and chirping raises hopes of a chance to get close enough to study them. Not too close. Like any wild bear, they're very dangerous, especially at a time like this. This is a very rare sighting of one of Feifei's distant wild cousins. <laughs> 